they're just uh, tough little birds. They survive in some pretty remarkably difficult conditions. You know, they live up in the interior where they're dealing with 40 below temperatures in the winter time. And when they're surviving in the winter, they have to put on something like 10% of their body weight and fat every day just to survive through the night. I'm Caroline Van Hemert. I work with the USGS Alaska Science Center. I'm a research biologist and do a lot of work related to beak deformities and black-capped chickadees and other resident Alaskan species. Looking pretty quiet over here. We're at the Campbell Creek Science Center and this is one of three sites in South Central Alaska that we visit regularly and we set up uh, mist nets and then hanging uh, funnel traps to capture birds. This allows us to, for one, just kind of keep a handle on um, how this deformity status is changing in the population over time. It also gives us an opportunity to track the history of individual birds. We capture and then band individual birds and then ideally recapture them over months or, or years later. You can see the legs are bare. So we actually have never caught this bird before because if we had, there would be a band. The deformities were first detected in chickadees in the late 1990s uh, and actually it was members of the public who first noticed that birds were appearing at their feeders with kind of unusually long beaks and at first it, we thought maybe it was just a few isolated individuals and it quickly became apparent that there was something much larger going on and since that time we've seen deformities in a number of other resident birds but the black capped chickadees are still by far the most common. Probably the most important measurement that we take is the bill length. 7.1, that is within normal range. Some of the things that we've been able to uh, rule out so far include bacterial infections, which can cause deformities in other birds, um, a number of contaminants that have been associated with deformities in other species. Uh, we've ruled out most nutritional problems. We've looked at potential uh, effects of feeder foods on birds, and that doesn't seem to be contributing to the deformities. We did find some evidence that there is an association with the deformities in terms of a specific virus. We don't yet know whether there, there's cause or correlation going on there. You have to be a little bit careful. Um, the, the birds with the deformities uh, certainly have more compromised health. They have a more difficult time feeding. Um, they have a difficult time keeping their feathers clean and preening. So they're often in, in poor general health, which may make them more susceptible to other diseases. So that's where you know, we really have to get to the, the cause versus correlation part of it. And we're, we're not there yet, but we do have a, um, a candidate virus that we're investigating further.